This thing is a beast! <laughs> Hello, people of the internet. Today, I have a special review for you because it is Ragnar, the 1969 VW Beetle that I restored to give away to one of you. And Anthony Hewlin of New Mexico is the winner. He'll be taking delivery of the car after I'm done this review. Today, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna nerd out on the tech specs, see what I did to restore and construct this thing, and then give it its first official bean test. All right, this should be the last time I ever have to go underneath this car ever again. Oh yeah, that's a uh, rotato, rotato potato. Starting with the rear, the exhaust on here is aftermarket and it's rather period correct-ish. It's pretty old. It was on the car when I purchased it, but I sandblasted it and then painted it with barbecue grill paint. The muffler is about as big around as a Pringles can. Hey, look at that. That's a broken windshield. No more. To further go along with my class 11 Baja 1000 inspired look, I added this custom fabricated steel skid plate. It took a little bit of clearancing to make it work. It has little access points for servicing and oil changes so you don't have to remove it. It's pretty rugged and does not impede engine cooling ability at all. Because this is a 69 Beetle, it has a independent with semi trailing arm and torsion bar rear suspension. And because I went with a class 11 rally inspired theme, it has a set of Bilstein 7100 remote reservoir dampers. You can see I mounted the rear reservoirs right here in the fender well. These guys right here are known as heater boxes and they provide heat inside the car from hot exhaust gases. A lot of people choose to delete them. However, I retain them just in case the car ended up in a cold climate or the new owner likes smelling exhaust gases while driving down the road. The 69 Beetle or Type 1 weighed in about 1,735 pounds and was in production for nearly as long as the average human lifespan. The center portion right there, belly pan, is like a giant skateboard that was interchangeable with other VW models. And what you see is the original belly. I dry ice blasted it and it's actually in rather clean condition still. Up above the skid plate and attached to this giant black robot's salad fork looking structure is the four speed synchro mesh manual transmission with a open differential and a 4.125 final drive ratio. There was also an optional automatic in this car. I have no desire to see what that was like. You can see along the pinch weld right here, all the hardware that holds the belly pan to the chassis of the car. It kind of reminds me of a modern EV, how you got like a skateboard structure with just a random body plopped onto it. Up front, you have a transverse torsion bar with upper and lower trailing arm suspension. And again, you can see those remote reservoir Bilstein 7100s. I had the front axle modified at Churco here in Tucson, Arizona with fully adjustable ride height capability. So you can have it lifted like it is now, put it to stock or technically slam it if you wanted to and adjust the rear with the torsion bar to make it match. I also added this custom aluminum skid plate that I designed to help protect its beak from stones. All right, it's time for the braking test. This is gonna be terrifying. No one behind me. Ready, go. Oh, jeez. Wow. That, I'm impressed. That wasn't bad at all. Way better than I thought it was gonna be. That braking was just accomplished with, yes, I'm starting in the rear. That's what he said. The, the car's on the lift backwards. A set of 8.7 inch or 220 by 20 millimeter drum brakes. They're just little drums, but they get the job done. And the wheels, these are the original 15 by 5.6 inch steelies that I removed the ugly chrome caps from because off-road. And the tires, they are a set of seven by 15 inch bias plies. They're a extra traction power 
Oscar. I don't remember what they're called. <laughs> Extra Attraction Power King. I was close, all right? That king's a fucker. Beast Mode Off-Road Tire. Up front though is where things get a bit spicy because this originally came with drum brakes all the way around. And technically that might have been better for off-roading, but this car will spend a lot of its life on asphalt and no one wants to rear end something. So I went with a Carmen Ghia disc brake conversion from MP. It is a 278 millimeter or 10.8 inch rotor with an opposed two piston caliper that is finished in gold zinc. It looks absolutely fabulous. I love the look of these brakes. Uh, the wheel and tire is the same as you get out back. Vogue, 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 Vogue. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing literally the first bolstering assessment I've ever done in this car before. So buckle up my harness here. Bolstering check. <laughs> this is the best bolstering of any bolstering test I've ever done. I literally shake the car when I wiggle. <laughs> These seats are super, super comfy and the bolstering is amazing on them. They look pretty durable, like they'll last long. But as far as the back of the car, I kept it just simple and kind of factory looking back there other than the cage with the harness bar and the two giant speakers, which look kind of like period correct and classic. I like the way they look. I made the storage compartment, have a little latch right here so you can access the battery and the voltage regulator. Gas pedal, no, it's a gas wheel. A little rouched door pocket. As far as drive modes go, they are infinite. It's all in the possibilities of your imagination and how you want to drive this thing. The shift lever for the four speed manual transmission is kind of like fishing. You just kind of dip it in the water and you move it around until it gets a bite and then that's the gear you're gonna use. You have to push it down to get it in reverse and it's uh, it's kind of tricky to actually get this thing in reverse sometimes. As far as the interior goes, this big wood empty wheel made such a difference in here. I feel it was like the finishing touch. Oh, there's fingerprints on the dash. I decided to keep the chrome glove box door because it was on here when I bought the car and I wanted to keep some of this car's history alive. So the gauge cluster is super optimistic at 90 miles per hour. I don't think I'd ever want to go that fast in this thing. Uh, and it's got a fuel gauge and a five digit odometer. I'm guessing it probably has 191,000 on it since it's so old, but maybe it only has 91. I think this is adorable. It has a shift pattern on the ashtray, which I don't, I don't think anyone will ever use again. Hopefully not. I even left the little plastic protectant on there so the new owner can peel it off like it's brand new. I'm just gonna barely launch this thing a little bit because I want, I don't want to break the winner's car. I gotta take care of this thing. It's not mine anymore. So, all right, ready? That wasn't really much of a launch. Come on, get it, bug. Get it. Go. That's 35 miles per hour. Come on. 40. Trud. It's a trunk and a hood. Trud. Ta-da! I just felt that was fitting. Sorry. Up this bug's ass is not the original engine. The original engine would have been the 1500 or 1493cc 1 1.5 liter, if you will, uh, flat four that made less power. Uh, that doesn't matter though. The engine that is in here that was swapped at some time before I purchased it is out of a 73 Super Beetle. It is the 1600 or type 126, which is 1584 cc's or 1 1.6 liter, horizontally opposed, naturally aspirated four cylinder. In stock form, it is rated at 60 horsepower at 4,400 RPM in 82 pound feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. However, it is not stock, so it makes probably a few horse and torque more than that, possibly. I pulled the engine and completely re-gasketed the entire thing and somehow it currently is not leaking oil at all, which I think is super rare for these. Digging in a little bit deeper into this Type 126 or 1600 dual port, it has a magnesium block 
with cast iron cylinder liners and aluminum heads. It is an overhead valve engine. It is air cooled, it means no coolant, no cooling system at all, it's air cooled for those of you that didn't know what that meant. And it has an 85 and a half by 69 millimeter bore and stroke and a 7.7 .7 to one compression ratio. Modification wise, it's fairly simple and period correct under here with this Weber progressive carb and redline intake manifold, as well as a Portronics electronic ignition. There are countless other engines I could have swapped into this thing, but the reason why I chose to stick with the 1600 is because a part of the charm of these cars is how simple they are to work on. And I wanted this to be a clean slate for someone to customize and upgrade however they so choose. I wanted to look fairly clean inside here, so I replaced all the engine insulation, painted the inside of the front lid satin black, and replaced all of the engine tins with new satin black ones as well. Now because this was a giveaway car and the new owner is picking it up in two days from now, I'm not going to thrash this thing off road, that would just be a dick move. But I am going to do a hill climb assessment with it and I'm gonna do a steep hill climb and I'm a little bit nervous about this. I kinda wanna get a little bit of a run up for this. Ready? Here goes. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, little Ragnar! This thing's a beast! <laughs> it just climbed that hill like a champ. Oh, well, that was fun. These things are so good off-road. I got Angel out here helping with the cameras. This is making it go a lot easier for me. All right, as far as hill descent control goes, I have a foot and it can maneuver the brake pedal. This is, this is a little beast. That's why I love off-road bugs. It is now time to do the rally special stage. I mean, it's a class 11 inspired build that has to do a rally special stage. Get it! Get it! Yeah! This thing is a beast! The ass end comes out so easy on this thing. This is fun! This Bilstein suspension does amazing off-road. And I'm not just saying that because it was sponsored legit. This thing is super, super composed off-road and like it's soaking up all these nasty bumps. Like I am legit impressed with these 7100s. And beans. There's not much beans. Well, it gets its sea legs in second gear. I'll have to ask Angel after. He's behind me in the Bronco on the chase cam. As far as storage goes, there's enough room to put some groceries in that frunk. Yeah, I kept the original spare tire. No, you can't fit a bias ply in that front area. That just it does make sense, but it's there nevertheless. And as far as driving on the road goes compared to before, it's really not much different. There's a loud hum, obviously, from the big bias ply tires. Uh, the suspension is definitely a lot softer and I actually kind of like it with these Bilstein 7100s. I can't really tell how much the speedometer is off by, but I'm doing the exact same pace as traffic and it says I'm doing the speed limit. So maybe it's not off at all. Maybe this thing's just slow. <laughs> as far as fuel economy goes, not even the slightest clue. Couldn't tell you. I put gas in it once. It, it uses gasoline. That's all you need to know. I am gonna miss this silly little car. I'm glad it's going to a good new home though. So here is the winner, Tony, your Thank new you. car. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I can't wait to drive it on dirt roads and at home and uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. I'm sure yeah. I'm going to enjoy it very much. It is now time to give Ragnar some scores, which will be challenging because I built the thing, but I got to stay unbiased. So first up is the bean scores assessment to feeling you get in your guts when you give it the beans. And Ragnar is getting a rating of... Next is the cookie score. It's an assessment of value, what you spend for what you get. 
I, the best way to rate this, I guess, would be next is the mechanic score. It's an assessment on a one to five scale based on how much of an ass pain something would be to work on. And this is getting a rating of, it is incredibly simple. Ass pain is all dependent on the manufacturer of aftermarket or factory replacement parts that you go with. Next is the meatball score, an off-road assessment. Little Ragnar here is getting a rating of Lastly is the Penguin score. It's an assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And little Ragnar over here is getting a rating of, I liked the story behind this car the most. And I try to keep some of that with the styling, the stickers and stuff and going back to the original paint color. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.